So let's talk about the science of black and white photography. And we start off with Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton is my favorite scientist by far. He invented calculus, he invented what we know as astrophysics, but he also studied optics. And Newton's research uncovered that color is not inherent in objects. This is what I mean. When we look at this apple, this apple is not itself red. This apple is actually doing a lot of things with reflection and scattering which we'll explain. Light interacts with matter generally in four ways. Through emission, absorption, transmission, reflection, and scattering. Scattering or reflection is how we perceive light. So this apple is actually absorbing every color of light and reflecting back red. So what we're seeing is its reflection of red. It itself is not red. It's just taking in all of the light from the sun, absorbing all of the other colors in the spectrum and reflecting back red to us. So when we think about light, we have to appreciate the gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet, infrared, microwaves, Wi-Fi, and radio are all different forms of light. That's why it seems a little silly to me to be scared of any 5G technology. It's just Wi-Fi. It's just light. Most humans perceive reflected or scattered light from about 380 nanometers to about 740 nanometers of wavelength. That's what we consider the visual spectrum of light. And that's where every color exists. So in our bodies, humans perceive images with one of three photoreceptors, the rods, the cones, or the ganglion cells. We're not gonna talk about the ganglion cells, we're gonna focus on the cones and rods. Only the rods and cones produce the chemical and electrical reactions that are required for you to have sight in the visual cortex. As you can see here, each cone, and think cone for color, has certain photopigments in it. The rod cells, in contrast, function better in low light and are used for night vision. They're not really used for any color vision at all. What does any of this have to do with black and white photography? Sure. So now we can go to my good friend, Kodak Tri-X 400 panchromatic film. So in the beginning, most black and white films were orthochromatic and mostly reactive to blue. Manufacturers like Kodak added certain things to their emulsion so that those films would become panchromatic or reacted to all the colors in the spectrum. As you can see from Kodak's tech sheets, uh, these are the colors along that visual spectrum that Tri-X is sensitive to. Notice this slight dip here. This means that Tri-X is less reactive to this bluish green hue and understand that each emulsion is slightly different. What this means is Tri-X renders each color as a certain shade of gray. If you have a camera with a color sensor and you take a color image, of course you can use Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop to simply desaturate the image or turn it to grayscale. However, as a personal opinion of mine, I argue that this is not as effective and doesn't recreate the look of Kodak Tri-X or any of the black and white films at all. In my personal opinion, the best way to replicate the look of black and white film is with the Nick Collection Silver FX Pro plugin for Lightroom. I'm not getting paid for this, I'm just telling you because I really think that that's some of the best software I've ever used. Now I searched for the spectral sensitivity of Leica's monochrome camera sensors and I couldn't find it. Apparently this is a trade secret and I just can't look it up. Now for the fun part. Neuroscientists Bannert and Bartles in a 2013 article of Current Biology authored an article entitled Decoding the Yellow of a Gray Banana. So they investigated whether the sight of a black and white photo automatically elicited the same synaptic response that a color photo would. They wanted to see if brain activity that was specifically encoded to colors could be elicited with a black and white image. They attached their subjects to MRIs and showed them black and white images and measured what area of the visual cortex was activated. Then they showed them the same image in color and saw what area of the color cortex was activated. They discovered that the primary visual cortex is not only associated with recognizing objects, but is also associated with storing that information. Their work helps us understand how we can make out objects in difficult or noisy environments, such as fog, overcast weather, or even indoors. 
further at the Neuroscience of Photography blog from the University of Richmond. In a 2018 article, they asked the question, is the experience of a photo dependent on synaptic activity? What this blog post states is that every feeling that we feel about a particular image, be it awe, excitement, sadness, whatever emotion you have, are all biological synaptic communications between the neurotransmitters. As these synaptic activations are happening, it causes the limbic pathway to activate, causing emotions to happen. So as a person looks at an image, after a while they may start to feel some type of sentiment and whatever that thing is that's coming from that limbic pathway. Through the firing of these action potentials inside the brain, the viewer will eventually associate some type of emotion with that image. So again, we have to ask, what does this have to do with black and white photography? Like I said in the onset, oftentimes we say that black and white images elicit more emotion or have more soul to them. So we know two things from the articles that we just read. One, we know that if we show a black and white image to someone, they're going to associate a color with it. And two, we know that when someone looks at a picture, those synaptic pathways are gonna activate and cause emotions to happen. So I spoke with my friend, Dr. David Van Wick, the neurologist at Duke. He's a busy man. So what I asked Dr. Van Wick is, if the brain is taking this extra step of having to decode black and white information into color, firing more synaptic pathways, would that elicit a stronger emotional response because there are more synaptic pathways firing this, causing more activation of that limbic pathway? And he said, yes, that is what happens. So that, my friends, is likely why you get more emotion from black and white images. So let me know what you think. I'm really interested in this topic. I would love to know what you think about all these things. Do you get more emotions from black and white photography? What's your experience using the desaturate tool in Photoshop? Does it actually make your images look as close to Kodak Triax or whatever black and white film you're thinking about? Do you like the way that those results come out? What are your feelings about any of this stuff that I said? Please let me know in the comments. I look forward to answering all of your questions. Thanks for watching. The interesting thing about this Kodak Triax technical data is that right here, it has the Sunny 16 rules. I'm gonna do a video checking those out. I'll let you know in the future. Later.